village is home to innocent Banda and his family. The 29-year-old volunteer teacher is getting ready to head to work. In Germany, teachers struggle with how to teach students best. But here, Innocent has to fight just to keep girls in class. This morning, he's heading to work earlier than normal. He wants to visit the families of several girls who haven't been to class recently. uh -huh. mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Innocent has heard excuses like these before. There are many hurdles standing in the way of Zambian children's access to education. Things like poverty, parental illiteracy, and most importantly, the long way to school. But Innocent refuses to give up on these children, and so he makes his way to the home of another one of his students. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> Getting an education is especially hard for girls. They're far more likely to drop out of school. Child marriage and teenage pregnancy prevent many girls from finishing school. What I want is, um, uh, you know, children are the future. Yeah. If those children cannot learn now, as we are getting old, who is going to occupy to be the TIC of Kamatete? Who is going to be the teacher at Kamatete if we can't educate those young ones? There will, there will be no one. That is why I'm fighting hard. As a volunteer teacher, Innocent doesn't see a penny from the government or the local community. Sometimes he'll get a bag of potatoes from a parent. Innocent never received any formal higher education, and he's largely self-taught, but that hasn't stopped him from teaching 289 students here at Kamatiti Community School. Hello. Hello, Anna, how are you? Fine, and you? I'm okay. Okay. Thank you so much, my college <laughs>
In Innocent's first grade class, math is on today's lesson plan. I'm impressed by the passion that Innocent injects into his lessons. It seems nothing can stop him from showing his students how education can improve their lives. Although he's working in rough conditions, his smile never fades. And there's a reason to smile. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 2, 10, 3, 10, 4, 10, 5, 10, 6. For the first time, there are an equal number of boys and girls in Innocent's first grade class. Next up for Innocent, math in grade 7. Okay, good morning, class. How are you? I'm okay. One thing I notice is that there are far okay, fewer students example, than in first boys. grade. They say Only 14 boys and just five. four girls have made the trek to class. Most of the students are around 15 what years age? old. At this age, many parents choose to keep their daughters at home to help around the house. <laughs> How do we find the difference between 822 uh, by 648? Okay. 2 minus 8. What is 2 minus 8? Eh? 2 and a turn go away. Hey, what are we supposed to do there? Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, one, we should carry. Two. 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 Like many Zambians growing up here, Innocent saw the same issues in his own family. My sister who stopped in grade 7, when my father was still alive. Then he, my father could force that child until she understood that uh, I think I should go back to school. So I have that history in my mind that uh, if I can force these girls to school, one day they will remember me to say, Mr. Banda Innocent was uh, trying to force me to go to school. Can you see, what am I doing now? Who I am? They would be proud of that, really. At noon, his seventh grade students are already done for the day, but there's no time for a break. Innocent is busy preparing for his next class. So they appreciate to say, oh, it's good for What could be done by the government to improve the school situation in Zambia? Um, uh, I would appreciate if the government uh, could continue uh, sensitizing the community schools. If they have programs, they need to invite us so that uh, we should also know what is going on in Zambia in order for education to be improved. Then uh, um, they should also include parents because parents are the ones who are keeping these children in their homes. After seeing how much passion Innocent puts into his work, I wonder why the government isn't supporting him. We cross the South Luangawa National Park on our way to Zambia's capital, Lusaka. Zambia is rich in nature, but there are fewer tourists here than in other African countries.
Most people in Zambia have to get by on about a dollar a day. Life expectancy here is one of the lowest in the world. With conditions like these, it's no wonder that education takes a back seat. I want to know more about what the government is doing to support rural schools. I have an appointment with Lancelot Mutale, an official at the Ministry of Education. Is there already something happening to improve the situation for teachers in community schools? I would have loved a situation where, in fact, they are given more money. Uh, than they are getting now. Because you're looking at issues of motivation as well. If you don't pay teachers good money, then it means you are killing the education system. 25 years ago, mm -hmm. we did not have this problem of teachers who were teaching without any pay. Mm -hmm. And the reason is simple. We didn't have such schools. And that also implied that we had more children who were not going to school. Mm -hmm. But now we have a scenario where people were asking questions, what are we doing with this army of uneducated children? They will soon grow up and this is a potential time bomb. Yeah, I think so, it's, it's a good system. It's in, in a kind, it's a good system, but I think you have to put in more structure, yeah. more resources, yes, yes. and it's not yet yeah. fine. We, we solved the problem of illiteracy, eh? so many children growing you illiterate. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can qualify. Let me qualify yeah. that. Yeah, we, we solved the problem of illiteracy so that now we have more and more children who can read and write because of the establishment of such schools. But in the process of solving this problem, we have created another problem of quality. So we were asking, which which is a lesser evil? Which one is a lesser evil? Not to have a good percentage of children in school at all, so that the few that we have can read very well and, and write very well? Or to allow as many children to at least be able to read and write, so that when they go, for example, to the hospital, they can read the prescription given. You know, what we call functional literacy. Yeah. That is why we're saying, because of trying to expand on access, It's four o'clock at the Kamatiti Community School, and Innocent is heading home. Most afternoons, he works the land, picking cotton for the weekly market. He uses the money he earns to send his own four children to school. He also grows food to feed his family. He's been working for 13 hours. I sometimes become sad because uh, I've not reached my goal. What I want is to reach to the college so that I have to educate my children. When I'm sad, uh, I used to take a Bible. I used to sit in my room. Uh, if my family has seen me that I'm sad, then I called my family. We sit together, we read the Bible. We ask God just to help us to continue doing what we are doing. Kalulu, mama, what ye? Innocent has chosen a job that won't improve his quality of life. But for me at least, his selfless dedication is what teaching is all about. Mm -hmm.